Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Kabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self-discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. Soul Seeker podcast number 203. I am so fired up to be here. Honestly, I've taken over four months, maybe even five months of a break from the podcast and it wasn't intentional. It just kind of happened. One day recently, I would say maybe about a month ago, I was like, man, I have not done a podcast in a while. And it was then that I realized I need that break. It was really, in a lot of ways, a mental health reset. But in a lot of ways, it feels like starting over from scratch because this podcast, I started back in the fall of 2019. And now that we're in 2024, that's going on five years. And what's most mind-blowing to me about doing Soul Seeker for five years is really that I've been podcasting for seven years. I've had over six podcasts over the years. And Soul Seeker is my longest one. It's the one I'm still doing. It was the l- number six. All of the other ones were before it. So it's just uh, really humbling to still be doing the pod five years later. And thank you for bearing with me as 2023, you know, for so many of us was just a very challenging year. I'm not going to say for everyone, but I know a lot of people that had major, major challenges and their whole life, the word I'm using is imploded. And that hit me. And I will say like, if you were doing the work last year and that work and your life imploded, you resonate with that, then you're probably also nodding your head that you're like, oh, I'm already starting to feel and see the benefits. And that's kind of where I'm at. And that's what I want to theme today's podcast about really the dark night of the soul, because the dark night of the soul is cyclical. I wrote about this in my book, Soul Life Balance, how it's not like we just have one dark night of the soul at the beginning of our spiritual awakening process. Really, it comes, it comes and goes. And obviously, it's not really a dark night. Usually it's a dark nights, weeks, months. Hopefully it's not a year. I know for me in 2023, it all started in late February and I really felt like I pushed through it and was on the other side around July, August, around the time I actually stopped doing the podcast. And I had probably about three months of really feeling really good. And then it came back. For another couple months, I ended up going to Bali because I was just in need of a reset. And I was actually out there to learn more about Kundalini. So with all of that, I have my tea right here because I want to remind myself to slow down. I know I tend to talk fast when I'm excited, but let's just go ahead and take a few deep breaths in together and ground. So obviously, If you're driving or if you're washing the dishes on a run, working out the gym, anything like that, you can just skip this ahead. But otherwise, I invite you to just slow down with me. And I mean, even if you're driving, you can still listen to this. Just don't close your eyes. So with that, let's just go ahead and close our eyes together and ground into your seat. 
Feeling your feet on your floor. Straightening the spine and beginning to deepen the breath. Slow inhale through the nose and longer and slower exhale through the mouth. Another just like that, slow inhale up and exhale, let it go. One last one, slow inhale all the way up. Sipping in a bit more at the top and slow exhale. When you're ready, you can flick your eyes back open. Just a few deep grounding breaths. And that's really what I want to talk about today in this episode is breath work. And the whole podcast isn't about breath work. It's more breath work as a tool to what I'm calling overcome overwhelm. Now, here's the thing. So many of us feel overwhelmed. And what I've learned recently is there's two main forms of overwhelm. There's internal overwhelm and external overwhelm. The internal overwhelm is really like existential angst. Like it's that feeling inside of you that is associated to the deep spiritual journeys you may have had, like entering the void. You know what I'm talking about? Where it's just like this almost eternal loneliness. It's it's very existential and it goes almost beyond what words like I can't find words to talk about it. You know what I'm talking about if you've experienced it. It's it's very much um, like that feeling in the void. If you've been to the void in medicine journeys or just that feeling like who created God, right? Where, where, where did this all come from? And what happens after this? What is the point of all of these incarnations? Like that is the internal overwhelm. And I tend to go to that overwhelm a lot and I wasn't able to name that in my youth. You know, it's only been recent years that I was able to build a relationship with that. The other side of overwhelm is external overwhelm. And this has everything to do with our obligations, our responsibilities, how we move through the world bills, all of these sorts of things. And that is very true and it is overwhelming. But I think what's most important, if you're someone who is currently experiencing some form of a dark night of the soul, and I'm speaking from experience from coming out of my most recent dark night of the soul, the multiple dark night of the souls I've been in in these last five years or so. And the first one, the first deep one back in 2019, definitely not the first one in my life, but the first one where I was like consciously and intentionally uh, doing the work, what I'm going to be talking about in this episode are the tools that have helped me most. And first and foremost, it's this acronym BREATH. Each of the letters of the word breath stands for something. And I am writing my next book, my sixth book, which is tentatively called Overcome the Overwhelm. And it's utilizing this framework of the acronym breath to access inner peace. And I want to also talk about expectations. When I say access inner peace, I'm not talking about accessing inner peace on an ongoing st state and no matter what, you'll never be shaken from that. I think that is almost delusional to expect that. I mean, if that's what you're chasing, like just eternal enlightenment in an ongoing state of enlightenment, more power to you. But for most of us, I know for my audience at least that is listening to the Soul Seeker podcast that watches the Spirituality Simplified YouTube channel and people that resonate with still moving through this human experience and grounding with it and having their relationship to spirituality, their higher self, soul life balance, if you will, it resonates with them more understanding like, hey, I, I want to find and access inner peace, but I understand it's not necessarily realistic for me to always maintain that state. So what I'm going to teach you here in this framework of the six step process that is known as just simply the breath process is how to access that inner inner peace. And you can do it 
in just a few minutes. And this is a misconception that I really, I really want to address because, you know, it's been, I don't know if the word triggering is the best word, but it's been alarming to receive a few emails recently from clients of mine that have booked me to speak. And one of them said that they don't have time to breathe. Now, you think about that as I sip some tea here, ginger tea. Let's go ahead and breathe. What is going on in our world that we use, that we would say, I don't have time to breathe? Because I know you've either, maybe you've said it before. I think I've probably said that in my life before. Or you've heard someone say that before. Literally, what is happening in our world that we're telling us ourselves a story that I don't have time to breathe? I have an issue with that. The second email I got from a client was, uh, I wish I had more time in my day for mindfulness. And I was like, wow, this is someone that booked me to speak at a conference. And, you know, this is where the integration side lands, right? You got you to embody this into your everyday life. And I also am using it as a way to shine a light on how I can communicate more efficiently because I think I'm talking about moment to moment awareness and I'm not talking about like, hey, you need hours a day to meditate because in truth, I don't tell people that you need to meditate twice a day for 20 minutes or anything like that. What I am teaching is noticing your thoughts. It's all about awareness. And through this breath process, literally, it can teach you to be more aware of your thoughts and feelings, which your thoughts and feelings create your reality, as shown by science through the science of the subconscious mind and quantum physics, just as much as spiritual laws like the law of harmony and the law of attraction. How we think and feel on the inside is going to be reflected externally. Let that land. We're experiencing a world that's chaotic, it's sticky, it's hard, we're swimming upstream. What's going on in your inner world? Are your thoughts and feelings in order? That's a very important place to check in with first. So without further ado, the breath process. The B in the breath process stands for breathe to slow down. Very simple. We're overwhelmed, we're, we're depressed, we're feeling panic, we're feeling fear, any of these sorts of things. When you feel that, come back to your breath. It doesn't need to be an, an activating breath. In fact, it shouldn't be. It should be something that's going to shift you into rest and digest. And as Dr. Andrew Huberman teaches, the practice of the cyclic sigh, inhaling all the way up through the nose, sipping in a bit more at the top and exhaling through the mouth and doing that for a few minutes is proven to be the most effective form of meditation, of breath work, and it's better than any form of meditation as well to shift you into rest and digest. That's a simple inhale all the way up, sipping in a bit more air through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Let's do it together. So for the next minute or so, as you're listening to me speak, whether you're washing dishes, um, driving your car, walking a dog, or anything at all, even if you're running, I really would invite you to focus on your inhales and exhales. If you're not working out, and that is if you're not lifting weights, running, or doing something like that, and you can totally just inhale all the way up through your nose, sip in a bit more air, and exhale through your mouth, for the next minute or so, I invite you to do that as you listen to me and notice how you feel. Because I can almost guarantee you, you will feel more restful, you will feel more at peace, and you will receive what I'm saying on a deeper level. You won't be thinking about what I'm saying and associate with past experiences or future worries or concerns or predictions of the future. You will be fully present if you just focus on inhaling through the nose, sipping a bit more air at top, and exhaling. So continue to do that for about another minute if that feels good to you. 
So the first letter, breathe to slow down. When you're feeling overwhelmed, panic, fear, depression, sadness, grief, anger, rage, any of these things, breathe to slow down. R, relax to feel. So the R in the breath process is relax to feel. As you're breathing and you're slowing down, we're not just breathing for the sake of breathing. We're breathing to see, to really, ah, I can't even speak, to receive and understand what it is we are feeling. Because science teaches us that our body has a 90 second physiological response when we experience an emotion. I'll say that again. Our bodies have a 90 second physiological response when we experience an emotion. And keep in mind that emotions are energy in motion. So if when we feel something that we don't want to feel and you're currently in it, as I would say, like in the dark night of the soul, and you're just you know, feeling that depression, that grief, that sadness, that existential angst, uh, you're having past traumas come up, whatever the case is for you, first breathe to slow down. After that, relax into it and feel what's coming up to the surface. Because a lot of times what happens is those traumatic events, we shut down right? We disassociate in those traumatic events. And please, for the sake of yourself and your healing journey, do not compare your trauma to anyone else's trauma. Trauma is trauma, period. And we all experience different forms of trauma. It could be as simple as being a little kid and telling and a parent or a teacher or someone telling you that you did something wrong and it was just a very trivial thing. In your mind as that little kid, you could have internalized that and that create a story and narrative for the life that you end up living. It can be that simple. So when we are breathing to slow down and we are relaxing to feel, what we really want to do is to surrender and accept what's coming to the surface, but we're not there yet. The next thing we do after we're re relaxing to feel these energies coming up is we're looking at those energies and we're letting them reveal something to us. That is the E in the breath process, energy to reveal these energies that are stored and stuck in the body that are starting to come up now. Maybe you just journeyed with a plant medicine like ayahuasca or mushrooms or earth medicines like Bufo, and you're starting to have things intensify in your integration process. Maybe this is happening for you so that those stored and stuck energies that were in the body are now coming up to the surface so that you can feel them, so that you can eventually release them. But before you release them, let them reveal something to you. Let these old memories, stories, experiences, traumas, whatever it is for you, reveal something that is a lesson. And how do we get there? That's the A in the breath process. We accept to surrender. So this is what it looks like. All of a sudden, I'm I'm feeling something, right? Maybe it's not all of a sudden because I'm in a state and it's been like this for a few days or a few wait, weeks, right? But now I'm ready to uh, do the shadow work and lean in. And now I'm actually feeling something in this moment right now. Breathe. Slow down. Doesn't have to be the cyclic side, but any form of breath work that is going to get you to slow down and focus on your breath. Let that breath re reveal something to you as those feelings come up, as these energies come up and surrender to them. All right. You have to really surrender to them. And what does it mean to surrender to them? It doesn't mean about giving up or anything like that. It means to accept. Surrender means to accept. That is why. I, that A in the breath is accept to surrender. Because yes, we hear the word surrender so often. It's like, what does surrender actually mean? It means to accept. 
So when something is coming up and typically we don't want to feel that, what do I do? I go food. I use food to numb myself and distract myself. Or maybe I use the TV and I'm like, I'm going to check out on the couch and just lie down, eat some bad food and watch Netflix. Hey, that is cool. Sometimes you need to be there. But if you have been stuck there for days or weeks or even months, it is time to get off the couch right now. No longer. One of my favorite public speakers, his name is Walter Bond, and he's a normal guy, right? He's a motivational and spirit, uh, motivational and inspirational speaker. He does not speak on spirituality. But what I love about what he says in some of his speeches is he talks about pity party. And he says, you have that pity party and you give yourself three days for that pity party. But then after those three days, and once those three days are up, you get up and you get going. And I love that so much because so often in more personal development circles and speakers, uh, they aren't as like mindful, like spirituality. And they wouldn't say like, hey, feel your feelings. And really, this is what it's so it's why it's so crucial. You need to feel your feelings and to accept them and surrender to them because otherwise you are just going to stay stuck in that victim mentality. It's okay and it's good and it's healthy to have that pity party. But come on, let's be real. If you're having that pity party for longer than three days, longer than a week, then what is that? Is it laziness? Is it victim mentality? Is it something else? Is that your comfort zone? In order to change and get out of the familiar state and go into the the unfamiliar and the unknown, you need to have that burning desire. And that's not anything I can do for you. And that is not anyone, anything anyone else can do for you. You have to find that within. And how you get there is counterintuitive. It's to accept. It's to surrender to it. Go and grab my tea. It's easier said than done, and it gets easier with practice, and you can get there with your breath. So again, breathe to slow down, relax to feel, let the energy reveal a lesson to you, accept it, surrender, and now at the T in breath, transform into empowering beliefs. Now, I have a hot take here and stay with me, please. But I think there is uh, a big issue with toxic positivity. You know, it's this false positivity where it's like, oh, life is so good and positive affirmations and I am this and I am that and all that. But really what you're doing is you're just lying to yourself and you're putting more of uh, you're stacking more layers that need to be revealed later on because there are all these energies of the of traumas or st old stories limiting beliefs all of that and you're being like no nah, none of none of that is real i'm just going to push that in a box and compartmentalize it and never come back and open that box and i'm just going to pretend like everything is happy it's not how life works and when you see people moving through their life, just acting like everything is happy and you actually know their story and know like, hey, it's not. And you also see that they're going through a lot of challenges, yet they're always happy and they're always so positive. That's toxic positivity. Now, there is a place for affirmations in this process. And it is now. This is the time of call in empowering limitless beliefs. We cannot just go straight to the empowering limit, limitless beliefs. We need to do the shadow work first. So in this scenario of something coming up for you, you surrendering to it, after you fully surrendered to it, what is the opposite of that thing? What is the positive? Because now it is time to instill in your brain, in your psyche, in your emotional state, and most of all, to feel this empowering belief. What are you telling yourself? What is this new energy of yourself, right? Who is this new person that you're becoming? And for some examples, it could be financial, right? Like you could be having financial issues. Most of the time, that's not going to be the thing that gets you in the dark night of the soul. It's going to be more like unprocessed grief over maybe a relationship or a loved one or something along 
along those lines a little bit more. It's going to be a little bit deeper. And you're going to need to dig deep for this empower, empowering limitless belief. But find that affirmation. And now as you're breathing, breathe that into your body and tell yourself, this is who I'm becoming. And you can only get to this place after you've done the shadow work. If you have not done the preliminary shadow work, like I said, then that's just toxic positivity. So that is why it's so important to do the first several steps in this process to really feel these energies, let them move through you. And now you have this new room for growth. Now it's time to call on this empowering limitless belief. And the final step in the breath process is H. And the H is habits to integrate. Because none of this matters if you don't take action in your life, if you don't actually make new changes, right? So I'll speak for myself. One of the things I've been doing in 2024, it's end of January at the time of recording this, is a cold plunge every single day. Now I'm lucky enough to live by the ocean and I'll go, I'll do an ocean plunge, sometimes two a day. Sometimes I'll go to the gym and do a cold plunge too. I've only been away from my home for a few days this month. And when I have, I've been able to find a cold plunge to keep this streak going. Now, don't think like, oh, you're California boy, you live right by the beach, all cool. I mean, that ocean is pretty cold. And I've gone in at 6 a.m. when it was dark outside because I had to catch a flight to Vegas and I didn't want to miss my ocean plunge. So don't think that like this is something easy. It's definitely challenging. But having said that as well, I'm also doing a different form of breath work that leads me right into my meditation and then getting into the ocean. And also writing. You know, I'm like I said, I'm working on my next book, my sixth book. And, and I started writing on my computer as a form of journaling because in the past I told myself this story like, oh, it's not journaling if you're on your computer. But I never liked journaling because honestly, it just kind of hurts my fingers for how much I have to write. By the end of it, my fingers hurt. And I told myself, oh, you can't journal on like a Google Doc. That's not actually journaling. And I was like, you know what? Screw that. Like, I'm actually going to just see how this feels. I was like, wow, why do I ever not write? Because I feel, I, I am a writer. I feel so much better when I write. So holding myself every day, whether it's for my book or just express my thoughts and feelings on not paper, but a Google Doc really helps my own mental state. In addition to that, sticking with yoga and getting in my body and movement I started painting as another creative outlet. So what are the habits that you're going to integrate into your everyday life? Uh, two more for me are things that I'm going to stop doing. I'm going to stop eating, I don't want to call it junk food, but overeating and binge eating. I'm going to stop laying on the couch and watching TV. Now, that's not saying I'm entirely stopping uh, doing that. In fact, last night was one of those nights where I was on the couch watching TV, binge, uh, binge, binge watching Netflix and eating foods that are not good for me. I just had one of those nights last night, but look at me right now. Now I feel great. Sometimes you just got to do that, right? But for the most part, I'm trying to avoid those things that lead me to not feeling good. And for me, my two biggest vices at the moment are laying on the couch watching TV because it is winter and it's easier to get sucked into that when the sun goes down and it's dark at 5.30, 6 p.m. and you still have hours to go before you go to sleep and it's kind of, you're kind of indoors. Okay, what are you going to do? Oh, it's easy to just lie down, and watch TV. For me, not good. Not judging if that works for you. Point being, what are the habits you're going to integrate so that you feel healthy and full? Now, all this to say, this, this episode is really about the dark night of the soul, how to overcome overwhelm, how to move into the belly of the beast and get through the storm, right? I don't want you guys to think it's all like, like you gotta get up and go, right? But at the same time, I think we, uh, I think we really baby step people, not baby step, but I think we really baby people too much. And it's like, oh no, take your time. I, I know things have been hard. You know, you've you've had a tough few months, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like just take your time. Sometimes we need that tough love, or we need that inspiration because when we are in it and we can't see that, we can't see ourselves in it. 
right? And we don't have an accountability person trying to help us come out of it. We just get stuck. And those months can just feel terrible. And I'll share with you guys as well, like how this has looked for me last year was basically, I would say for about 10 months of the year, pretty nine months of the year, pretty much the whole year, I was dealing with this very challenging situation. It was, and the story I had was, it was the most challenging time in my life. And that's true. Yet also, I felt great moment to moment and day to day. And then that started to build up some guilt, right? And then I kind of went through this thing where it was like, I'd have a stretch of a few really good days or a few really good weeks, and then something would happen. And then I'd have a really tough like two days. And sometimes like those two days would turn into a week. And then I'd need to like get some momentum going again. But there was never a time. There was never a time during that whole period where it was weeks on end for multiple times uh, where I just felt like in it and it was a dark night and I couldn't move through it because I util utilize this process that I've shared with you throughout this po podcast. And in addition to that, I do give myself three days to have that pity party. And I want you to give yourself those three days as well. But remember, after those three days are up, and maybe for you, it's going to be longer than three days, but please don't let it be past seven days. That's just ridiculous, right? Like we need to get going at some point. This is soul life balance. This is yin and yang. This is feminine masculine, right? The shadow work doesn't need to be so hard. I think this is another thing that people get misconstrued that shadow work needs to be dense and needs to be heavy. It needs to be hard. I don't subscribe to that. I think it can actually be playful and fun because think about it. We chose this human incarnation. We chose the different soul contracts and people that we're incarnating with and the karma that we're working out with them. We chose it all. We can't do this dance. It's exciting when you're a student of spirituality and you really like learning about all of this stuff. When I'm just going to say shit hits the fan. That's like, okay, let's go. It's game time. This is why I've been doing the work. And for me, that is what has made this more fun and made it less heavy. Now, I'm not spiritually bypassing because I'm still feeling it all. Now I'm just looking at it from a different framework, a different mindset saying, hmm, I'm really passionate about learning, doing the work and the healing work in myself, but that's all theoretical. Now that it's here, like, wow, what a gift. Now I get to lean in on that and see what gifts are on the other side. What transformation will be on the other side? This is the hero's journey. This is going into the belly of the beast and meeting the dragon. And finding excitement in that brings joy, it brings awe, it brings this childlike wonder of, wow, this is magical. And I signed up for this. So that's what I got for you guys. I hope this resonated. This is my six-step process, the breath process, which is going to be in my new book, Overcome the Overwhelm. With that said, I'm going to get back to doing the Soul Seeker podcast. It's not going to be every week. It's going to be when I feel like I have something to share on a solo cast or I have a um, an amazing guest to share their wisdom. Upcoming, we have a podcast after this going to be released with my homie, Troy Casey, the certified health nut. That is going to be an awesome podcast. We record that back in October. And for a while, I was just unsure if I was going to release it because it was the only podcast that I had done in a while. And I was so off. I just didn't feel good about it. And I just re-listened to it. Uh, earlier today of recording this podcast on January, what is it, 30th. And I was like, damn, that was actually pretty good. So got me motivated to release that podcast. And that's when I realized that it's been five 
I months since I put out a podcast. And I was like, well, let me just do a solo cast to kind of update where I'm at first. And then we'll release the one with Troy Casey. We have another podcast coming up with Naomi Wilder. She is an incredible Kundalini teacher. I first went to her Kundalini class back in 2019. And I think I only went once or twice because Kundalini was really hard. It wasn't my thing at the time. But in these past few months, I've really gotten into Kundalini and she teaches here in town in Santa Cruz. So it's been cool getting to know her and I'll be interviewing her the, this weekend at the time of recording this podcast. And that episode's going to be all things Kundalini. I'm super excited to share that one with you guys. And I have a few more pending guests as well. So that's kind of what the Soul Seeker podcast is going to look like. I also have the Spirituality Simplified YouTube channel. You can check that out in the show show notes. That's uh, full of breath work, exercises, meditations, visualizations, things like that. Final thing to know is Structured Flow, my 12-week program is available either as a group or private one-on-one coaching. So if you're looking for guidance, I, it's really more guidance than coaching, hit me up. I do that. And breathwork journeys. If you're interested in doing a remote breathwork journey or something for a group of friends, hit me up as well. I love you guys. Thank you for checking out this episode of the Soul Seeker podcast and try out this framework of the six step breath process. B, breathe to slow down. R, relax to feel. Energy to reveal. What are those energies coming up? Let them reveal a lesson to you. A, accept to surrender. Accept and surrender these lessons, those feelings that are coming up. T, that is transform into an empowering belief. Because remember, it's not all dense, gloom, and heavy. We are going to lift ourselves up. This is the time for positive affirmations. You can utilize neuroscience teaching us about the theta brainwave states before you go to bed, when you wake up in the morning, repeating your affirmation, things like that. More of that will be in the book. And the H, habits to integrate. Because if you're just going to do this once, then it's not going to do anything for you. The, the whole practice of this breathwork framework or this breathe process is that you can literally apply this at any point in your day. It only takes a couple of minutes because you feel that feeling. You breathe to slow down. You relax to feel it. You let those energies reveal something. You accept them to surrender them. Then you transform them into an empowering belief. And then you can say, hey, how am I going to carry this forward? Literally, that can take you a couple minutes. So no, it's not about doing 20 minutes of meditation twice a day or anything like that. It's about having the awareness to notice when you're feeling something and come into this breathwork process. That's what I have for you guys. And thank you so much. I'll see you on the next episode of the Soul Seeker Podcast.